And this is a very decisive question which cannot be only discussed among um, particularized energy experts. The most energy experts are a part of the problem, that's my experience. Because they have a very, very limited view, only looking to some technological elements and comparing a, a, an isolated technological element, a power station, with a cost for a power station for renewables. That is too less. This is not enough. This uh, doesn't give us a view about the problem. This hinders us to have an adequate view about the problem. And this shows at the same time uh, that um, the requirement to follow the total other energy flow uh, of the renewable energies leads to another energy system and to another development of the economy. The changes are tremendous. The changes to renewable energy system, to a renewable energy system are changes from <coughs> foreign energies for the most countries and more and more countries to indigenous energy. It is a change, a shift from commercially primary energies, coal, gas, coal and uranium, to non-commercial primary energies like wind and solar radiation or hydro. The only exception is biomass because the agricultural work has to be paid for the production of biofuels. But uh, it is uh, a shift which shows that the primary energy economy, the oil suppliers, the gas suppliers, the coal and uranium suppliers will disappear. They will lose their job. They cannot change from being a seller of oil, gas and coal to become a seller of wind or solar radiation. And this shows how strong the resistance against renewable energies must be. They don't have a chance to shift to renewable energies with their main job. They can do other things, but they cannot remain in the energy field. It is, furthermore, a shift because of the other energy character, another energy density, a shift from few big power stations and refineries to many uh, small and medium ones who all together replace the few conventional power supplying structures. It is a way from the need of many infrastructural um, transportation systems to regional transportation or to energy autonomy uh, with a one windmill including storing technologies. It is a radical shift and it shows at the same time we need other players for that. Because only with other players we can do that. Because the conventional energy system is in a situation which is um, difficult for them, no doubt. Because uh, there is not one time identifiable, not one time at which all the previous investments they have done for the whole energy convention, conventional energy system, uh, that all these previous investments are amortized, are repaid at the same time. This point doesn't exist. Because the investments were not done at the same time. They are always running investments. And the uh, different investments along the whole chain um, have a different, have very different, um, different lifetimes. And therefore they try to postpone the present way, their way up to the last drop of oil, the last ton of coal, or the last cubic meter of gas. That is their problem. And therefore, if we want to come to a renewable energy strategy, we need players who don't have this vested interest. And this is the secrecy why the Renewable Energy Act in Germany uh, worked, why it became so successful. We created a special energy market for renewables, which could not anymore become, uh, uh, which was not anymore interferable by the others. Uh, we created two, three elements. First element, a guaranteed access to the grid. A sec for each renewable energy power player, even if it is a very small one. A second, to give a guaranteed payment. Only with these two elements, 
Um, we could overcome any interference of the power companies. The investments, uh, the investors had the opportunity to do it without asking for a permission, uh, for a permission by the conventional power players. They got investment autonomy. And therefore, and they had their back free to do that. Uh, they um, had no vested interest in the energy system. And the third element was not to make a cap, because only if there is no cap, there is an industrial development, there are industrial investments. Uh, uh, these are long-term investments. And these three elements created the dynamic we have in Germany. Only this. We're now seeing the renewable sources become cost competitive without decades and decades of subsidy, without you know the the kind of uh, uh, job incentives. I mean, the coal industry gets subsidized all over the world to keep employing people in this thing we know is the engine of our, our potential demise. Um, you don't get government subsidies very many places just to employ people building wind turbines. Um, so there is really you know it's an unequal economy. But even even that said, we're now seeing. Uh, a, a pretty big uh, headway made by the renewable sources. And anywhere where they've done the German-style feed-in tariff, one of the brilliant things about it is it's not a subsidy. It is a ratepayer um, uh, surcharge, basically. So it's not your tax dollars, it, it, as a German consumer, uh, that, are, that are feeding this, this, this sort of extra cost of, of, of solar and wind. Uh, it's, it's, you're just paying per kilowatt hour. What that means is whoever you know, uses more energy uh, uh, pays more. Of their share. On top of that, you now have the opportunity as a German citizen to participate in producing energy for the first time in a very long time, and that can offset some of your costs. So, so from the consumer or average taxpayer's point of view, it's an incredibly um, attractive offer. If you are a conventional energy producer uh, with hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars invested in the infrastructure of delivering um, these fuel sources, it's not so attractive. And uh, this shows four for, uh, consequences. And I want to uh, say some words about these four consequences finally. The first consequence is our political, all political institutions, politicians, governments, parliamentarians, should have in their mind that um, it is necessary not to accept anymore that the protagonists and the carriers of the present energy system should be the carriers, the protagonists for the way to renewable energies. They can't, because of the reasons. They can't. They can, they can do it a little bit, a little bit, but they are um, obliged by their own business management calculations to postpone they will never become the real driving force we need. Uh, we need independent investors. And uh, that means they should um, finish the behavior to be subordinated, to feel subordinated under the conventional power companies if they are state-owned or private. They must, uh, they must come to an emancipation from them. This is a spiritual element, but they need it. Only then they can develop, independent from their advice, uh, the adequate strategy. And they should overcome the limited economic view. We can, we can explain, if we take all political elements together, all economic elements together, all the economic advantages, all the avoided problems by going to renewable energies, that each step to renewable energy creates a macroeconomic benefit for each society in which it is happening. We can show that. But a macroeconomic benefit is not at the same time a microeconomic benefit for all producers and customers. Therefore, the political art is to transform with the right policy like the Renewable Energy Act, to transform the macroeconomic benefit into a microeconomic incentive, then the dynamic from and with the society starts. This is the first uh, main uh, recommendation. The second is, it is necessary to overcome 
even among environmental organizations, the particularized view on ecology and their natural protection. This is one problem of wind uh, dissemination. Because when people uh, fight against windmills cause of landscape protection, then they have a, also a limited view on ecology. In the time when the glaciers smelt, when the eyes of the Arctis smells, when the eyes of the Antarctis smells, when we have more and more droughts and more and more storms, uh, more and more heavy cause of the uh, climate change. Uh, we can see there is not one square meter in the world which is not endangered in this, uh, in his um, uh, capacity and in his form, not endangered by the conventional energy system. And the only opportunity to overcome this is to shift to clean, emission-free energies like wind as a driving force actually for that. And therefore, in order of, um, in, uh, in, the, in the intention to protect landscape, uh, fighting against windmills is out of standard. It has nothing to do with ecology. We fight for the global ecology. We fight for the global protection of our uh, environment and therefore we cannot, uh, we cannot, we should tell them that is, um, who have this wrong standard that they have a too limited scope of uh, environment understanding. And the third element is we should speak about 100% renewable energies. As long, we must show it and it is possible everywhere. It is done by many, by some studies. But why it is necessary to speak about 100%? And how it is, why it is necessary to speak about a fast, the possibility to make it fast? Because nothing can become implemented faster than renewable energies. We have a short installation time, very short with renewable energies. We have a long construction time for power stations. Therefore, the argument is nonsense that we would need time. We need, uh, if we are in a race against time, we have the best opportunity to do it with decentralized renewable energy system. But why 100%? Because only then the justification is over uh, for investors, for conventional energies, or for governments that we would need, we would need a new coal power stations or new uh, nuclear power stations. The justification is always that renewable energies are not enough or would not be enough, but it is enough. Therefore, it is necessary to show 100% opportunity and uh, to show it that it can be done faster. That means it is easy to show. 
with a, if you take the most modern windmills with a higher individual capacity, you, we can show, it is possible to show for Canada that within five years you could substitute 20,000 megawatt nuclear and coal and um, combine it with the existing hydropower. Nothing is better technologically, complementary, than hydropower from dams with wind. Because then you have solved all reserve problems if there is sometimes not enough wind. <laughs> then you take one turbine more and you have it. With uh, such a background of one third large hydropower in dams, it is totally easy to come to 100% solution by wind power investments within five years. Where is the problem? The problem is in the mines. It is not a technological problem, it is not an economic problem. The problem is only in the mines. And problems and barriers in the mines could, we can overcome all of us very fast because it is just getting the information, getting uh, the recognition of that, of the real alternative. That means we have the perspective and we should run and then we can win the future. Thank you very much.